part of my mission on this channel is to bring awareness to people that are interested in agriculture that you can do it from the ground up. What's up y'all? I'm Ryan and this is So and So Farms. We are a first generation row crop operation out of Southeast Missouri. First generation, started it from nothing. Um, no buyouts, no inheritance, um, nothing like that. Uh, just from the ground up, nothing against anybody who, who came about it any other way, but this is just our story. So, that being said, we do grow rice, corn, and soybeans. We're in the middle of rice harvest. We've already harvested our corn and we are getting ready for beans in probably 10 days. Beans will be ready. Um, so tag along. See that? Beans are changing. I'm kind of bummed out today. I'm headed to go disc around some fields so I can burn them. We do a lot of burning in our part of the world. Um, we get some flash flooding and things like that. So rice straw, corn, corn stubble, stuff like that will all uh, float down to the bottom sides of our fields and just make a huge mess for us. So we like to burn that straw while we can. And if we get a dry fall, we'll go ahead and disc a lot of that under. So that's what I'm doing today. On a previous video, I pulled the humdinger, um, got everything fluffed up to burn. And now I'm gonna go grab the disc, disc around it, and I've got a torch on the ranger behind me to burn. I do not live in my vehicle, as I've previously stated. I carry those pillows because my sons, Cooper and Braxton, ride with me. My partner, Shane, is up getting some fuel out of the fuel tanks, and uh, we're rocking and rolling. Part of my mission on this channel is to bring awareness to people that are interested that you can do it from the ground up. It does take a few things. Planning and a work ethic. Um, your credit needs to be decent. So if you need to be working on that, be working on that. Uh, I also do finance as a full-time job at a dealership. <clears throat> In the beginning stages, Shane and I were both working full-time jobs and juggling the farm in between us on our off days. So you got to be prepared for a long, or, you know, a, a hearty schedule and um, lots of long hours and, and, and big work work ethic. So anyhow, that's where we're at. I'm going to do my level best to show you everything I'm doing today. I got up this morning, got in this truck that the side to side was already hooked up to, and I'm going to let you see what happens moment to moment. I, I tend to forget sometimes and don't pick the camera up. So what I'm doing is a disc and a burn barrier. And yes, it's still loud in here. Still missing that piece. But anyway, I'm just folding the disc out. I would like to do it more narrow than this, but as heavy as these newer discs are, you can't just disc with the base of it. Um, eventually we'll buy like a little three-point disc for jobs like this, but I'm discing a burn barrier. I'm um, just turning up fresh dirt, that way I can, you know, burn this without it getting out of control. I'm going to do this field, I'm going to do that field, and then there's some row rice over there. And uh, I'll be caught up with the combine when I do the corn and the row rice. I've kind of done what I can with the, uh, rice fields since i fluffed that straw the turbo is not uh, really cutting enough to throw any dirt up so i'm kind of in a weird predicament here i did this in the dark the other night and there may not be enough straw to burn there's a lot of dirt in there i haven't disked this but you can see what that turbo does I mean, it literally puts it all up on top. I often wonder if we couldn't run a hay rake on this stuff. And I mean, it left a little green stuff in there. But honestly, we don't want to just take everything out. We want to leave something in there to, number one, hold the dirt together. Number two, something to put back in the dirt. But for the most part, everything's almost like hay. But there's so much dirt in there, I don't know if the fire is going to travel. 
if we can burn 60% of the straw we'll be in good shape but I don't know a lot this happens a lot when you have to cut low when you have like down rice you gotta cut it super low we'll see this is normal straw here but like I said a lot of this we had to cut low and it really don't give it anything to grab and pull up I just not very optimistic about how this field is gonna burn we may have to just disc it in and let it lay all winter and rot and disc it again aggravating I think the one across the ditch over there is gonna burn better anyway I'm not gonna disc around this field because it does no good so I'm waiting on Shane to come get me. He'll take me over to my truck where I left it this morning. And my torch. And we'll just come see how good this is going to burn. There we go. It seems as if the wind's going that way. Yeah, for sure. So the wind is coming out of the east, east-northeast. So we'll go down, since the wind is headed, the wind's headed that direction, we'll go down to that end of the field, burn about a five or ten foot strip along the bottom. That way when the fire gets to that, it stops. Yeah, we're definitely blowing out of the east. Maybe a little northeast. So, once we back burn, then we'll come to this side and light all along here, and the wind should just carry it through the field. In theory, theories are a great thing. Thanks for the ride, Shane. Get our burn buggy and get to it. It's going to be the last engine starting video you're going to see on this flatbed. Because in a couple hours, a guy from Texas is supposed to be here. We'll see if he shows up with the money. And it's not counterfeit. Time to get burning. Carbureted. How about check the tires real quick? All good. Torch. Go out here and do a smoke test real quick. Need a little more trash. Oh no, it hasn't went out. disking on the bottom so I'm just gonna go up to the top up here and start lighting and I'm gonna need both hands but this is what I'm gonna do all the way across the top of the field
pretty neat deal. I've never seen one that big from a fire. I'm not going to get anywhere near it. It's starting to sprinkle, so I may ruin my burn here, but I've got a pretty good burn going on. The torch handle gets really cold. Well, I'm not going to sit here and stare at this for very long. I'm going to go try to light this other field, see if they can burn before it rains. double check them make sure nothing got where it was supposed to go not supposed to go you know what I'm saying did not get a very good burn just you know within 20 feet of where I lit is all that burned so that might have really thrown a wrench in the plans with the rice burning here but if we have to we'll just disc it all under next spring just lot to contend with we have that hipper chopper though and it it makes things easier when you got that hipper chopper it will hide a lot of hide a lot of problems so that's probably gonna stick a fork in our harvest for the day I'm hungry the guy buying this truck was supposed to be here an hour ago never got here see it's a uh, I don't know if you can see the raindrops on the windshield, but yeah, everything's smoldering out, so that's it for the burning. I don't think it's going to dry back off to cut today. Corn did burn good, though. Uh, sneak back there and show you that real quick. Of course, you can see grass strips where we maybe missed it with the spray or whatever happened there, but just leaves you whatever stalk however high you you cut it and but Shane cut this corn a little high because the head the header was acting up sorry I had to hiccup the header was acting up so he cut it a little high but uh yeah that's what we're left with I'm gonna run in town get something to eat visit with my wife for a minute and wait for this guy to show up from Texas Smolder, smolder, smolder. It actually was burning better than I expected it to do. So maybe when it dries out and the sun comes out one day, now I've already got a barrier burnt around it, and I'll just come out and light it, and that joker will go like crazy. Well, we're getting close to the end of the day here. It kind of rained us out. I got Braxton with me. We're going to move the combine to the next field. This is a field that Shane and them cut yesterday. A 40 cut pretty decent. Um, I'm gonna move the number one. They finally got the number two machine going today. I'm gonna move the number one over to the next field. That way he don't gotta add that to his day. Tomorrow he can just come and climb on the machine and rock. Thing moving. 
so much handier having Braxton around. I can get stuff done and he can shuffle me around and he's my little buddy. We got the corn burned off, the rice stopped burning, but that's okay. It's 100 acres of corn ground burned. We like, let's see, I think I like there's a 40 left I can burn. And some more rice ground, but one day off isn't enough, but I'm thankful for the one that I have and for the things that we can get done. Turn on some flashers here. Braxton to come in behind me. There he comes. All right. Throttle up. It's like driving a spaceship. Despite the rain, it's still a pretty day today. And as usual, I am moving this combine. It does get squirrely. It steers from the rear, so I'm going to shut you down right now and uh, pick you back up when we get to our desired location. This field is the next victim. Beautiful fall evening. Trucks lined up. Rice ready. Combine ready. Grain cart ready. They should have everything they need out here to start tomorrow. Until then, it's going to be it for tonight. We appreciate you guys. Blah, blah, blah. Like, subscribe, share. Hit the notification bell. And we're going to catch you on the next one.